Well, hello, and welcome to another Daisy in Ten's hardcore playthrough, Trials of Terry Part 4. While we're waiting for Terry to wake up from his 40 winks he had at the end of the last episode, quick recap. He's just outside of Mogilevka, on the outskirts, a couple of minutes walk, and he'll be hitting the next bunch of houses, should we say. And he's still going to be cautious after what happened to him in Chernogorsk. He wants to get as far inland, get as close to Pat and the boys as he can with each stage of his journey. And again, thank you for all the love shown on the series so far. Every comment, like and subscription means the absolute world. And as you can see, Terry has woken up from his little nap. Refreshed. But we're approaching sunrise. So these super dark conditions you're seeing now on your screen, and what I'm seeing, I wouldn't say super dark, I mean a little bit gloomy. Within the next 10 minutes or so, we should be back to full visibility. So let's have a look. I've still got my fish. Quick look of what we've got. We've got our guns. I'm going to put my gun on my back, actually. I only had it on me while I was getting 40 winks because I didn't know who might creep up on me. But even though this beginning bit is dark, I hope you can still see the beauty in Chernogorsk and the true conditions that we... have to deal with. Now we're going up this way. I've checked my notes in my journal and we should hit a pub, a log cabin, a couple of sheds and obviously I'm going to do my usual risk assessment. Do we need anything? Is it essential for us to loot those buildings? I'm even wary about going into Mogilevka itself. There is a well and a hunting shop if I remember my times passing through there. Being a, an electro man, we'd often cut through Mogilevka if we had an emergency in Chernogorsk, if the roads were very busy, the main coastal road, we'd often cut through Mogilevka, so I know it quite well. I know there's a castle up on the hill. It, as we're looking at it in this direction, it would sort of be two o'clock, three o'clock from Mogilevka. There's a castle on the hill and I wonder whether it might be worth investigating the castle in case we could find hunting equipment. I know a lot of hunters used to go up that way. Maybe a rifle that is better than the, the, the Pioneer we've got now even though it's in pretty good shape, the Pioneer, and it's got a pretty good kick to it. It hasn't got a scope so if we were to find something or even a scope itself, we could then use to zoom in and stay, you know check out areas before we approach. Because I, I do like approaching with caution. That's, we've made a silly mistake in Chernogorsk that has sort of really hit home and affected my faith in humanity. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that the next person is going to be a nasty piece of work like he was. Maybe we could find friendly people who can help us. But there's nothing of, of, of sorts here that we could potentially need. Other than maybe a better backpack. There's a couple of houses. What concerns me is there's not a lot of the, the poor undead souls. There would usually be, I would have thought, around a, a dwelling and, you know, a little... Hamlet, should we call it like that? I would have thought there would be some poor unfortunates. Oh, I can't see any. Oh, there's one over there. Okay. We'll move on. There's nothing of fantastic wealth for me, I believe, in those buildings. We're going we're gonna to move on. And like I say, I know this area well. The main road swoops around in a clockwise fashion, into Lower Mogilevka itself. But I know of a shortcut. We're going to come up over the hill here. 
And from my fishing and hunting days with Michael, I do believe there's a couple of deer stands we could have a look at. And who knows, we might find something more useful on those rather than that type of residential property. As the sun starts to come up behind us over the coast, beautiful. Oh, here's one of those deer stands. I was right. I might be getting old, but my memory's not failing me just yet. Look at that. Got to sometimes just take it in, folks. For all the hell that we're living through, we still get views like that of a morning. Let's have a look at my journal. Make sure I'm putting in my notes for Pat and the boys exactly where we're heading. We're heading towards Mogilevka. We're very close. And we are on the lookout for, for boots. Our wellies have taken a bit of a bashing coming from Electro. Uh, we find shoes, but they're in just as bad condition, are they? Yeah, there's our wellies, okay. And if we carry on in the direction we were walking, up over the hill, here, we will very soon start to see Mogilevka emerging ahead of us and to our left. When it comes to water, we will get hydration from the fish. And there is a town beyond the castle called Vizhnoi, which has a well in it. There's the castle ahead. Oh, we just, just caught a glimpse of it over through the trees. There's the top end of Mogilevka. If you're coming in from Chernogorsk way, you'll hit that green moustache and that stilted first. Yeah, there we go. We can see the outline of the castle in the distance. Oh. Smoke. Oh, dear. someone have a fire or is that a helicopter crash oh dear maybe there are injured people god damn it even the choppers are coming down there's another deer stand up on the hill beyond that log cabin but my full attention now is to these Poor souls who may have been lost in this crash, but on the other hand, you think of the equipment they would have on board such a vehicle. Where were they going? Were they going up to the military base? Oh God, I'm glad I've heard that Pat and the boys were last seen being put on a truck, but some other poor families could have been taken by other means to these sort of safe zones. survivors and poor souls aside what would be on these vehicles these helicopters if that is what it is that has crashed I mean something giving off that much smoke is something that was carrying a lot of fuel that's where my first instinct goes to a helicopter crash there's another deer stand up on the top of the hill that I do want to check and then maybe we have an overwatch of the of the scene. We get some higher ground. Let's start eating some of this fish just to keep our food and our hydration going in the right direction. Something I was thinking as well as I was taking 40 winks underneath that tree. After what happened to us in Chernogorsk, I think we have to be of the opinion that what I would do in, in life Obviously, a peaceful man, a lover, not a fighter. But, someone who served a long time in the fire service, I would say that I've had my moments of, of bravery. Do we need to be a bit more aggressive when it comes to people? If they look armed, dangerous, and, it, you know, they have the look of a Mr. Mongolia about them, you know, are they wearing military outfits? Are they wearing red berets like he was? Ski masks? Carrying weapons? 
It goes against every bone in my body, every fiber of my being. But if a man or men are potentially standing between me and my family, as a pacifist, is that going to get me anywhere in this world? Do I sometimes need to judge the situation and take a chance? I mean, that is a helicopter crash. There's Mogilevka, and I've really lost any sort of appetite to have a look at Mogilevka. I wonder if that helicopter crash would have given off a lot of noise, obviously. I may have drawn attention to it. I can see some poor souls wandering. The potential equipment that could be there, I think the chance of finding any survivors is going to be minimal. The firefighter in me, though, wants to investigate to see if there's anything I can do for anyone. I can see a bit of movement over there. Maybe things aren't as lost. Oh dear. Uh, even at this distance, I recognize those shambling steps, shuffling steps. I mean, we have a weapon to defend ourselves. But look how open that helicopter crash site is. If anybody were to come from the castle, if anybody were to be in a tree line with a sniper rifle, we'd be pretty easy pickings, wouldn't we? And we could be starting our trek up north all over again for the sake of what might have been. What is that over there? Is that a, that's a hay bale. One of those poor souls behind it. There's, I mean... <sighs> where would your snipers you probably be laid up? I mean, there is a tree line overlooking it. There's plenty of trees overlooking it. But they're quite thin themselves. What if we found something on there that really gave us a chance? getting to see Pat and the boys. If I just get a little bit closer in these trees. Such a shame we haven't found uh, some binoculars or another way of getting a better look. In terms of space, oh dear. Now, this is risky, Terence. dropping the burden of the rifle and the bag and some equipment I will have a bit more agility about me if I needed to move quicker but I'm making myself an easy target for a sniper by going low but I'm obviously trying to factor in I don't want these undead to suddenly turn on me in numbers Yeah. Oh wow. I'm going to leave. Oh no. One of those things has heard me. Come on, brother, I mean you no harm. Oh, 
Caught me with one. I just picked up the weapons and left because... I don't even want one of them. It feels like it's... Something too big that we wouldn't want to burden ourselves with. Oh dear, did I choose the wrong bush line? I did. I need our distance weapon, which is our pioneer, of course. Here's our stuff. Wow, a grenade launcher, though. I mean, I'm sure some people would jump on the possibility of having such a thing, but I mean, look at that, a pristine automatic rifle, which has a magazine, even though the magazine's not good, not in good condition. It almost makes me feel like I should carry the automatic rifle. Even though it's not in great condition. If we could find a box of ammunition for it. Suddenly, you'd like to think we could protect ourselves better. Especially if we could find a gun cleaning kit. Some way of improving. in the magazine but the problem I've got is that if I wanted to bring out my melee weapon now to protect myself against one of the undead I would have to first drop the weapon I'm holding in my hands because I've only got two slots on my back for these rifles and guns so I may, may, need, may need to make a decision and drop our pioneer rifle it seems crazy to drop the shotgun because we've actually got quite a bit of ammunition for that. And it could be the only way we get to protect ourselves as I move up towards the castle. We'll check these little benches. You never know. Oh, a compass. God damn it. Think. Where's that piece of fish we were eating? Oh, there it is. Let's eat the fish. Yeah, there was definitely no survivors around there. I could have checked it more. I'm sure, I just heard something behind me. We're going to keep hold of the Pioneer Rifle for now. The direction we're going... ...means for a little while anyway we can ponder this decision. Hiking jacket. I'm going to keep my firefighter jacket if it's all the same to you. But I know... A lot of the huntsmen that used to come up to these castles, we'd meet them, myself and Michael, in the pubs. I had a drink in the pub in Mog Mogilevka a couple of times with the boy, and we would meet the hunters who would come up here looking for the bigger game, and they would describe some of the rifles they used as, as being 7x39, and that's what this assault rifle takes. So if we could find a box of ammunition, I mean, I could certainly then ditch the shotgun because we could use 
the assault rifle to defend ourselves in a close quarter situation. Certainly. Is it risky going up there? Yes. Will there be other survivors, perhaps with bad intentions, with the same thought process? Yes. Um, I'm sure I heard a clicking noise in this sort of direction when I was eating that fish. Maybe we get um, a hunter's backpack up here as well. I mean, something with a a slightly bigger capacity. So this little school bag we have would be nice. I mean, by taking that grenade launcher off the the helicopter and putting it away in the bush, where it probably will not be found, unless by accident. Oh dear lord. This one had good ears. See, that's what's annoying about what they would call triple carrying. Having to drop your weapon to fight one of those things. Poor things. And please remember, I don't mean it disparagingly. Make some notes. We saw a helicopter crash. No survivors. We found a gun. We're heading towards the castle. Overlooking Vishnoi. In the hope of finding maybe a bag, maybe some ammunition for our gun. Now I know Vishnoi is that way, so we're not going to leave via this main entrance of the castle. Oh, there may be some structures in the castle, perhaps. We certainly don't want an old helmet. Maybe there's been some LARPing going on up here, some live-action roleplay. Before the end of times happened. Looks like somebody tried to barricade this off to people, but it's been breached. It has been breached at some point, but we've got to be wary. One of those things reacting, but I think it's to my footsteps. I've got to be be honest. Their hearing seems to be getting better, if anything. Maybe they're mutating. Got to watch for bear traps. I know some of the huntsmen used to like that. Oh, we've got a hat. Oh, look. That gun is better condition than the one we're carrying. Which is something. What's this? Another one. So the, the hunters are left behind a couple of shotguns. At least we improved on our shotgun. There's that. So it wasn't a complete waste of a journey. And now we go on towards Vishnoi, where we can take stock. We're going to need to be careful. Obviously the well is there. It's going to be of major interest to people. Clean water to drink from. We still haven't got a vessel to take water with us. I know we're getting hydration from our fish at the moment, but... I want to try and sneak out of here without having to take on any more of the undead. As we head there to Vishnoi. What a beautiful view it is. Let's get 
down into these trees. In case people were coming up behind us. Like I say, that helicopter crash would have made a hell of a noise. And people would have certainly, you would have thought, come to investigate. I've made a decision as we're walking as well. To ditch the Pioneer rifle. We have no scope for it in any case. It's not as common as you think in terms of it being a hunting rifle. It's more of a police issue. My friends in the police have told me. So we'll empty the ammunition because we could use it for something else, of course. And as it lies here, I believe it will be difficult for anybody to find it. We've got 9mm, obviously our 45 for our Colt. Oh, we only had two rounds in that scout, I thought we had three. Okay. Need a bit more of our carp as we're walking along. And we will have to hit the well. Beyond this, when I woke from from my nap, I did a few sketches in my journal of the land. And as I said to you before, I know where I'm going because of my time in the in the service and my time living in these lands. I know where I'm going to a point. I'm very familiar still in the terrain that I'm traversing. And beyond the hill, over that tree line, is a town which is abbreviated to Starry by most people. There's a military base there. Uh, medical center is what I'm most interested in. But the way that the well is situated... is concerning it's not as how can i say it covert as you would like it to be i mean why would it be it was made in times where you shouldn't have to be worried about bandits shooting you while you're trying to get a a clean drink of water this is very quiet as well none of the undead but we need a sip at the well because we don't know when our next drink will come from. We know we still have fish. One, uh, two pieces of fish and we've still got our cat food as well which will give us some hydration. But we do have a little bit of space now having eaten some of our fish. And we've still got to think, oh there's someone, there's a survivor. Oh no, they're struggling. <sighs> I don't want to alarm them too much. It seems they were having a bit of a tough time there with those creatures. They fought a few of them. They fought, they were fighting bravely. I think they went in that shed to patch up. What's to say they're not like that damn Mr. Mongolia though? I think they just went into that beige building.
Let's try and talk to the poor soul. They've had a tough time. We'll give humanity one more chance. They could be scared stiff out here alone. Or they could be a cold-blooded SOB like the guy in Chernogorsk, you know? Hello? Hello there? Can you hear me, son? Hello? Never a great sign. No reply. Having not long left our ranged weapon behind as well, in the trees up towards the castle. Although we do have green slugs in this shotgun. I don't like that they didn't respond. Oh. They'd moved on. I mean, we need that well. Why aren't they responding to me, though? Why can't they just talk? What's the matter with people? Hello? Are you friendly, son? Hello there in the cabin. Do you need any help? Oh, why would they do that? Why would they do that if they were friendly? Come on, Terry. You've got to ask yourself these qu difficult questions. People are different now in these times. He didn't seem to want to engage at all. He just ran. Towards the farm. Behind those buildings. My gun away. I don't want to frighten the bejesus out of him, but he's not helping himself. Okay, he's moving away. He's moving away. He doesn't want contact. Maybe he's been. Maybe he's been in a run-in with a Mr. Mongolia. His own Mr. Mongolia. We'll let the lad be. We had to draw our firearms. We had to protect ourselves. We must remember that he's headed in the general direction that we were, that we are. And we do obviously expose ourselves at the well, knowing that somebody is has been around he did seem to be moving up the hill in a different direction he hasn't even touched the well the chap we will get hydration from our food we know that We are a sitting duck where we, while we drink like this. He's made a bit of a mess, hasn't he? 
That'll do. You know, he didn't tell us his intentions. He didn't want to speak to us at all. We tried talking calmly, then I talked a bit louder. Um, and I guess we might never know his intentions unless he repositions and gets a shot on us here. Then we'll certainly know his intentions. But he fled like a like a scared rabbit from that log cabin when I addressed him. A bit closer, so that he was under no... He was under no illusions that I was there. He definitely heard me. He was looking back at me through that field. But if he cuts through that tree line and goes in the direction we saw him go in, then we better keep our rifle ready in case he's a bad lad and he's laying an ambush for us. But he had it away on his toes at a rate where... I think the guy's just seen too many bad things and has maybe gone beyond the point of giving humanity a chance and anybody a chance. He didn't look like he had a particularly massive amount of stuff on him, you never know of course. Did he perhaps glimpse the gun on our back which could work in our favour, which could also work against us because a lot of people might see that as, ooh, I want a bit of what he's got. If we look at our... What I planned to do was take a sip of the well, and that's exactly what we did. So in terms of that little stop being a success, I mean, you could say it was. But maybe we could have made a friend. But of course, things could and still could have worked out a lot different. If he'd have got really spooked, stood his ground, held his ground, and pulled a firearm on old, on old Terry... We could have been set back further. And the gap between me, myself, and my family could have been widened again. Which would be a shame as we're incrementally closing that gap with every hour that goes by. I think the fella will probably go into town. He looked like he was thoroughly checking out that last place he was in until maybe... We spooked him. Maybe the undead become a bit too much for him. I mean, he ran out of that log cabin looking like he was still quite healthy. Maybe a healthy young guy. Which is what concerns me. Because maybe, in, you know, he could get the edge on old Terry. That's why I'm holding the firearm. Because you never know what his intentions are. Because he didn't speak. He didn't give me a chance. To show him that, you know, I, I would be there to help. Maybe he needed a bit of food. Maybe, you know, we don't know what he needs. Because he didn't speak. And I've got to feel that I've got to go with my gut instincts. And from years in the service, we had to use our intuition at times. And tell me a story. Tell me something. But don't give me nothing. People with... A lot to say can sometimes have bad intentions. Too much to say. But somebody who says nothing? Ever heard of the phrase, it's the quiet ones you've got to watch? Well, case in point. My only other conclusion, which is a negative one again, I'm afraid, is this chap, if he knows the lay of the land, will know the medical center that I intend to go to next. He was running away with a spring in his step and perhaps he's, he's got a very good chance of getting there before us because, you know, we went and had a drink at the well. But I think if we see a chap in red in front of us in the future... It goes against all my belief system. But I'm going to have to shoot first and ask questions later. And it may be that it sets us back in our journey. It may be it puts us further back. Further away from Pat and the boys. But 
I tried to be nice, I tried to speak. I got nothing back from this from this chap, so Although as a Christian man, it goes against every bone in my body to, to, to take a life. Where does it come to a point where you've got to do what you've got to do if someone stands between you and your family, your flesh and blood, your loved ones? I wonder if he knew where he was going. Was he just running blindly? I mean, he's got this far inland. Must know a bit of you must know a bit. Must know a bit about something. This weather's not great. This is uh reminding me of home. My home before Chernogorsk and Electro. My home in South Wales, in the United Kingdom. Quite often looks like this. Especially with the greenery as well. A lot of green fields, fair bit of rain. But the sun always shines on God's country, as they say, and it certainly did back there, too. Cumriambeth. Very, very nervous about this chap now. I mean, I'm holding my gun in case he's laid an ambush. But in holding my gun, I make myself look more of a threat. A more of a menace and maybe force his hand to do something to try something if he were to see us so it is a bit of a catch-22 situation we've got to walk, we've got to go across open field now and if that ambush entails something with a range some sort of ranged weapon then this would be his opportunity so see we're coming up on starry here it is. Let's put our gun away. See the military outpost just beyond that red tin barn building? I don't really want to go to that. That's going to be popular with your bandits, your bad fellas who, who want to do bad things. And what do they need to do bad things? They need guns and ammunition. Now, we're carrying guns and ammunition, but we're doing it for our own protection. So, I suppose I could be called a hypocrite. What's good for me is good for them, surely. But, if we are going to bump into people with bad intentions, military areas, I would say are going to be high up on the list of possible encounter places. Our chap in red, our runner... Little Rabbit, we'll call him. Rabbit in the headlights when he came out of that log cabin. He was gone. Will he have the bravado? He didn't show much bravado in that encounter. So would he have the bravado to approach a military area? Taking on a bunch of those of the undead. and Maybe running into bandits and not being willing to talk his way out of any confrontation because he didn't even talk to a friendly guy like myself so what would he do in the face of people pointing guns in his face you know if he did though want to explore the possibility of getting himself a weapon that would be the place to go in allowing him free reign we may then allow him to have a way of taking us out further up the road but we don't know what route he's taking normally people would go military maybe the well the medical and they would certainly then perhaps entertain go into another military facility which is just up the road I'm not going to go to that military facility if we get past this town and I do say that insincerity because it's a big place it's got a lot of areas that people would be keen to explore like the military over the other side of those barns so if there is a town where you could describe a good location a good place for bad people to be in 
Starry would be one of those towns. Again, I'm not seeing a lot of the undead. I do want to check this little caravan thing. We're going to pull our gun as well. We're going to make a decision to pull our gun. A mask, some pants. A pioneer magazine. For a pioneer we no longer have. And there's the medical centre. Now for me, we have a weapon with ammunition. We have a very good weapon with no ammunition. And so instinctively you, you might say well why don't you go and check that military area for for said ammunition but I'm, I'm hoping I'm getting across that my priority is getting to pattern the boys if I avoid bad people they don't become an issue we tried to talk to that guy back there we took a, a judgment we made a snap call I would do that in the future as well but he was in a civilian village, I would call it. The only problem is if he startled me in this medical centre, if he came the same direction, or if anybody was in the medical centre, if he startled me, would I be able to hold, refrain from opening fire? for pain, I believe. I haven't got the room for that. Ooh. I'll take that. I believe that is for pretty, pretty bad. Pretty bad things. Bad stomach medi medication, which is never a bad thing. I think sometimes you just have to take the wins. We got some more stomach medication, bad stomach medication, and I'm pretty sure we picked up some medicine that can be intravenously injected with our syringe that deals with your sort of cold, flu, pneumonia, maybe even sepsis. I'd, I'd have to check my journal. But I want to pick a place where we can perhaps wring out our wet clothes, restock on what we've got now, what I've got now, what, what we've gained from our, our trip so far before we take the next part of our journey, which is going to be one of two places. I believe we're going to go to Cabanino, which is just up the road. I do believe that will be our best bet. Um, from there, we can either take an, an anti-clockwise journey around the big airfield, which most people refer to as Northwest Airfield, which I have no interest in visiting. We can take a big wide berth anti-clockwise around that and continue on our journey north. Or we can cut across, sort of underneath the airfield, to a town called Vibor. And then we could go straight north from there. But that's when my map knowledge of the area becomes a little bit sketchy. And not as great as you would perhaps hope for. This green double building here could be a nice place to evaluate what we've got. Again, the well is back there. It's very, very dangerous location. Nothing but seeds there. The only problem with this greenhouse, it does 
arsenic. Ooh, I could do some danger with that. Oh, wow. Let's just put them on. I really like these cargo pants. That's a pretty good find. More, more slots as well, surprisingly. Let's hope nobody is holding an angle and holding a grudge as we enter this building. a line of sight into the window so let's get down crowbar can be used both as a melee weapon can be used to cut up rags for example obviously we found this machine gun on the helicopter crash I mean if we were to get a gun cleaning kit and some 7x39 feel a lot more confident about protecting myself than the shotgun we've got now. But at least we've got something with the shotgun. We're carrying 380 that we haven't got a gun for. Picked up some air towel. Let me just check my journal. What air towel does. Oh, it's a pain medication. Okay. Pain medication. What's that on the floor? That's a magazine. Oh, we have got some way of looking in. What a, what a clown I am. An absolute clown of hell on times. I'm going to say take that off. We haven't, we're not carrying a Oops. We're not carrying a, a 380 weapon, but if we did find a little 22 MK2 pistol, we do have the ammunition for that. I'm going to load it up ready in case we do find one, and then we can put it straight in, and it could be a good way of... Uh, Fixing the undead, shall we say, with a bit of distance. Bits and pieces there. We know about our weapons. Still got our rope belt. Damp, damp. Okay. Let's wring out our gloves. It does involve poking our head up above the, the parapet taking faith that there's no sniper just waiting to have a pop but if it helps against colds and flu so that anti-pain we picked up more of mesom forte which will help if we were to get an upset stomach We've picked that up, we've picked that up. A compass is new to us as well. What I can do now is I can use the crowbar as a melee weapon, and that just, even though it's badly damaged, we can get a few more bits of use out of the machete in terms of a blade. We've still got the pristine steak knife. We've still got the damaged hunting knife on our belt. A syringe, our flare, that, the blood clotting agent. Oh yeah, the moxivan, and we also picked up this, and we oxacillin. I suppose some people would say the machine gun is the biggest find. I've seen better days, Terry. The grey in your beard tells a number of tales of things you've seen, not all of them you wanted to see. But in terms of progression, 
creeping towards Pat and the boys. Let me put a, a note in for them that we're we're in Starry. We want to head towards Cabanino. And in doing that, we're starting to make steady progression north. We'll have to have a choice then of where we go from Cabanino. But find out in episode 5 exactly what direction Terry decides to take. And if you haven't already, like, comment and subscribe. It means the absolute world, folks. And we'll see you in the next one. Love ya. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.